The other day I went over a free tool that I created to split out your Kitbash 3D models inside of Houdini. Now, once you have them all split out, you're going to need to texture all of them, which can be quite a pain to do individually. So I wanted to show a way that we can do this in a more procedural way that will speed up the process significantly. So just jumping in here, I have the Kitbash 3D um, HDA that I created, and I just have our file pass set up here with this view all models checked. We'll go ahead and uncheck that and just zoom in here and I have these two pipes in our model. So this specific model is going to be good because it'll be, it only has one material on it, so it'll be a good demonstration for what we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna drop in a material node. And then if I go ahead and take a look at the groups here, which I'm just going to put them both in here because there's only two, so they're a little off screen for you guys. There are two groups here. So the first one is this KB3D OTP pipes A main, and then we have M KB3D OTP metal painted white. So the second one is going to be the material name that we're going to be looking for. So just keep that in mind for here in a second. Go ahead and get rid of that first one. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to our material context and this is going to be all done inside of Redshift as well. So I do have a light dome and a camera already set up just to give us some light. But if I go ahead and jump back to the material context here and do RS Builder, I'm going to go ahead, drop that in and dive in here and just get rid of this material and go to the standard material that is new in Redshift 3.5. Go ahead and wire that on up. And then I'm going to go back up to the top here because we need to set up a couple things on this BopNet. So we're going to go to Edit Parameter Interface, and in here we're going to need two strings. So these two strings are going to be the basis of our um, procedural setup. So let's set these up here. And the first one, we're going to name our file path. And we'll just copy that into the name as well. And the second one, we're going to call our material name. And once again, we'll just copy that in there. We'll click apply and accept. And in the material name, we're just going to set this to $OS. And what that is going to do is it's going to set this value equal to whatever we name our VOPnet here, which is going to be important here in just a moment. And now we also need to get our file path. So here I just have the Kipash 3D textures all in one folder. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this on over and just paste that into our file path and just give it one more backslash there. And that's all set up. So if I go ahead and dive into our material here, if I take a look back at our textures, the one that we're looking for, if you remember, was metal painted white. So we scroll down and we find these different material or textures that we have right here. And they're all named in a specific way. And actually everything in this folder is named a specific way, which is going to be important for this setup. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to basically use the file path to get to this folder. We're going to set this first part, we're gonna hard code this in, and then we're going to have the $OS be this part right here, and then we're also gonna hard code in the base color. So that'll make sense in just a second. So I'm gonna drop in a RS texture node, and we need to set up the first thing. So we're going to copy the file path here. So we're gonna copy relative references, if I can, or copy parameter, draw a blank. And we're going to paste relative references into our file name here. And then we need to get the next part of our file name. So where this first one's gonna be base color. So we need to type in this KB3D underscore OTP underscore. And then we're going to do something else here in just a second. So as I said, we need to do KB3D. Actually, that will let me. Actually, let's just copy this over from our file. So we'll just copy this. 
and paste that in here. And that's the first part. So let's go ahead and dive back up here. We're also going to copy the parameter name or the material name. And we're going to go ahead and paste relative references there. And then, like I said, we need to get this second part. So underscore base color. So we'll go ahead and do underscore base color. Make sure that it all matches exactly. So dot PNG. Now you could also set up the end here, I believe, to change the file type if you wanted to. But if I go ahead and wire this into our base color now, it should all be working the way that we were looking for. So if I go back to our material here, and let's actually, we actually have to do one other thing, which like I said, we have to match the name of this material. So we're doing metal painted white. So this is what we're going to name our Vopnet. So we'll do metal painted white. And now everything should be all set up. Let me just double check in here. Everything looks good. And if I go back to our material here and I set that material as the one that we're looking for and I bring in our render view properly. Now we can go ahead and do that for every single different texture that we have. So if I look here, we have height, metallic, normal, and roughness. So let's go ahead and just drag these on here. So we'll do, let's see, we said metalness, and then we said roughness, and then we said normal. So we'll do, sorry, not normal, but a bump map. Go ahead, wire this in here, set this to tangent space normal, and we'll wire that into our bump input. Now we just need to copy over the same thing here. So copy, paste this in. Actually, I lied because we already have this set up. So for this second one, we need to set this to metallic. metallic. The third one was our roughness. So we'll set that one as roughness. And the fourth one was our normal. So we'll set this as our normal. And now if I just refresh here, everything looks good. If I look into our folder here, you can see that we have tan and we also have a blue one. So let's just demonstrate that we can change this. So we'll change it to tan. And we go ahead and refresh this and you see that it updates accordingly. And if I go to blue, because we also had a blue one, Actually, I already have this set up, so we'll just name that something different. Make sure you name that blue. We'll refresh this, and we're all set here. So everything's set up perfectly, and just to demonstrate that it is working properly, we just change this one back to white. Go ahead, just refresh that, make sure we're all good. I'm gonna set this one, this material, back to the blue one that I had set up earlier. And it's black because we have the name incorrect here. So we'll go ahead and set that back up correctly. We'll let this just kind of clean up for just a moment here. Should be good. We'll go ahead and take a snapshot of this. I'm going to go ahead and dive in. And I'm going to go ahead and wire these into the different channels. And these are the hard-coded textures we have here. So if I go ahead and take a snapshot of this, they should look exactly the same, which they do. So everything working exactly like we were looking for, which is exactly what we wanted. So if I just go back to what we had set up over here, like I said, we got to set up the file path and then we have to set up the material name which all we have to do to change this to diff something different would be to change the material name, just alt and drag, and then it's perfectly set up for the next material that we wanted. And that will be true for any of these materials. 
So because they're all named the exact same way with this KB3D OTP, and then the name of the actual material, and then underscore whatever channel that they're referring to, roughness, refraction, normal, you know, you can set them all up to work appropriately. And like some of these, like obviously we didn't use refraction. Some of them will have different ones like emissive. So you can set those up individually for those as well, because most of these just deal with, you know, base color, normal roughness, and maybe metallic as well. So some of these won't have all of the channels, which you'll need to, to kind of pay attention to. But for the most part, this is going to be super quick and easy to set up all of the materials on your different models and makes it a lot faster so you don't have to go through each individual one and hand set up every one by scratch. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel on how to do different things inside of Houdini. Like I said, this HDA that splits out the different kit bash models I kit is downloadable for free. It's on my website, so go ahead and grab that if you're interested. But check out the other videos on my channel if you're interested to learn more about Houdini. I also have a little bit of stuff on Cinema 4D, Clarice, and some stuff on Redshift as well. So check out any of that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.